Hi, my name is Abra Arneson and I'm a clinical herbal therapist in Ottawa, Ontario. And this is my fifth video in a series I'm making on using herbal medicine to overcome chronic illness, specifically chronic infection. And this includes Lyme disease, the co-infections, but also uh, strep, staph, pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, any chronic infection. This is the model that I have learned and use. So the first thing in, so this video is about um, correcting nutritional deficiencies. Um, the most important thing in the essence of this video is to know that what, a bac what bacteria is doing in your body is eating. We are the lunch for bacteria. And that's whether it's a good bacteria or a bad bacteria. When a bacteria is pathogenic, there's unrestrained growth of that, that bacteria. And then it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. It just munches and munches and munches, causing damage to tissues, which is besides the uh, immune response that can cause a lot of signs and symptoms of chronic infection, a lot of what's going on with infection is damage to the tissues where the bacteria is eating. So let's just look at a couple of different bacteria and what they eat and how that affects the body. So um, Boreala burgdorferi is eating manganese. And manganese is a trace mineral found in connective tissues. Myelin sheaths, those are the linings on the nerves that create smooth transmission of nerves. They love, uh, manganese is high in joints, in the capsules of joints. It's also very high in the eyes. So a lot of times what you'll find with people struggling with Lyme disease, a boreal infection, is they'll have eye involvement, there'll be nervous system involvement, and there'll also be joint involvement. Now there can also be lung, heart, digestive, um, involvement because it's also eating the connective tissue and connective tissue everywhere in the body has connective tissue therefore any area of our body can be affected by that particularly bacteria that particular bacteria infection whereas Bartonella isn't as like uh, systemic it lives on oxygen and it finds its oxygen in red blood cells, therefore it lives in red blood cells, as does Babesia lives on hem, which is inside red blood cells. So that's where they live. Uh, also the malarial parasite lives inside red blood cells. And what all this causes is anemia and the associated signs and symptoms of anemia. So this would be extreme fatigue, dizziness, brain fog, uh, muscle weakness, but also a lot of liver involvement and spleen involvement because of the number of dead red blood cells that the body is having to process. Whereas bacteria like streptococcus um, or Klebsiella, they live on carbohydrates. So you'll often find that bacteria in mucous membranes. Uh, carbohydrates are basically complex sugars and our mucous membranes are made with carbohydrates, therefore, or they're complex sugars, therefore that's where that bacteria goes to. So with the strep, there's a sore throat because this is a really um, strong mucous membrane. Um, so now that we understand what the bacteria is doing, and if you know what kind of bacteria you're dealing with, you can feed the body the nutrients that the bacteria is scarfing down in order to offer the body an opportunity to repair and replenish damaged tissues. And this is a really big part of herbal medicine, is we have a plethora of mineral-rich herbs that we can use to support health in the body and help the body rebuild and re-nourish and repair. So uh, probably my all-time 
favorite high mineral herb is oat straw and this is actually the straw of the plant not the seed which is what you make your oatmeal with um, it's very high in iron manganese magnesium and selenium so iron for all those people who have a bacterial infection that's affecting iron levels in the blood, but also the manganese for people with the boreal infection to replenish the, the manganese. And then selenium is like one of the key components needed for a healthy immune system. It's a very powerful antioxidant. Uh, nettles is another plant that I use a lot to replenish minerals. It's very high in iron manganese, magnesium, calcium, potassium, just to name a few. It's also uh, one of the higher plants with protein in it, so I can replenish protein as well with nettles. Uh, alfalfa is probably the highest mineral-rich herb. Calcium, potassium, sodium chloride, sulfur, magnesium, manganese, iron, copper, really important herb. Uh, very deep roots. Uh, they say when a plant has very deep roots, it is pulling up all those nutrients deep from within the earth. Uh, now here's a plant without deep roots, lays very close to the earth, plantain. Uh, another one of my favorite herbs for replenishing uh, minerals. Uh, manganese, magnesium, iron, those again are very high in plantain. Often I'll combine all these plants and I'll put in another plant or two plants that are very high in flavonoids. And flavonoids support our whole other way of supporting health in the body. Video, Our next video, video number six, will be focused on flavonoids. But the flavonoids support the absorption of the minerals, helps the body absorb them. So... Uh, my all-time favorite um, plant to use in this situation is rose hips, but I've also I'll also use hibiscus flowers, hawthorn leaf, and flower to offer those flavonoids to enhance the absorption of minerals in the body. Some people say like. Should you be doing this? Shouldn't you just be starving out that bacteria? Um, well, if you starve out the bacteria in one area, if it's in your eyes eating all the manganese, it's just going to migrate to your neck where it's going to go into the joints and start eating the manganese, manganese there. It's better to replenish so that the body can repair the um, the damaged tissue than to uh, starve the body of nutrients. And also nutritional deficiencies uh, in chronic illness are quite serious. It's very hard for the body to um, gather its resources and, and mounts a credible defense if it's suffering from nutritional deficiencies. So um, high mineral herbs are key to wellness. Um, I have put on a formula for a high mineral tea on my website, aberherbs.com, uh, if you're looking for such tea. I welcome any comments or questions you may have, and I hope you found this video informative. Bye.